or sound? I'll just do it. I'll just do it this way. Okay. Yeah, everyone's saying same, can't hear you. Okay. D. Good, Good evening, wife for Katie Free. No sound, darling. Right, can you hear me now? Hi, Catherine. D. Can't hear anything. Can't That's hear. Lisa Barrett still. Still. Right, okay. no. One minute. Oh, uh, lots of people saying good evening. Oh, Jeanette says yeah, sound. Tracy says sound. Should have. It's saying yes, I think. So, yes, back. I'm back. So we're not doing the microphone there. No microphone. So everyone can hear me now. Yes, they're hey. all saying yes. Okay, so I'll start again. So you would have just seen. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start again. So um, I'm here with Katie Free, homeopath. We're in um, Betchworth, so we're doing it from a different place, which is nice. I like to shake it up a bit. Um, and Katie's going to be reading out comments, and I'm just going to try and get the laptop up. But I can't seem to. So it doesn't matter. Do you need me to come and do the laptop? Yeah, do you mind? Well, we'll get organised. We were all ready by about 7.30, weren't we, Katie? We were. We so, were. um... Oh, it's Katie. Hello. <laughs> Lots know me already. Ah, mm. oh, I know. If we go back and then go on. Normally, you have to flick it up. It comes it. up. There you are. There you are. There I am. Okay. Lovely. Okay. So let's do big screen. Big screen. There you go. Lovely. Oh, no. That's not big screen. Okay. So let's do that's good. That's what dance? Yeah. There we go. Do you need to see the comments though? Yeah. There, there we go. So, right. so you're on. Lovely. Right. We're on. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you everyone for being patient. Um, so hi Sarah Nichols. Hi Pauline. D loud and clear. So obviously um, I'm just saying D's having the evening off. So Katie is taking D's place. I'm now D. Um, yeah, now D. <laughs> so we're going to talk today. What I want to do first um, is talk about the new superluminal frequencies and consciousness that is coming in right now. So um, the last, I would say, four months, would you say, Katie, have been expanding. Abs yes, very much so. In our, in our consciousness. Um, Sarah King, hello, Kun Kunker, you'll have a new name soon. <laughs> um, so yes, so it's about what's happening now. So we have been told by Channel that October, November are going to be, um, I would understand it to be a complete turning point, crisis point. But out of a crisis can only ever come... Um, emancipation and we do all need to be a little bit emancipated freed from the past freed from all of the constrictions that we've had in the lot well we would say three years but i would say we've been constricted for lifetimes. many many years yeah lifetimes um so this is what's happening at the moment so i don't know if any of you have been feeling um a little bit severed so halfway up and halfway down like there's this pulling this kind of vibrational disparity between reality and illusion so i don't know if anyone's got any comments on that or you katie if you feel well we keep being told don't we that we're at the rubicon point yes yeah of humanity so it can kind of go either way yeah so we're at this tipping point level. tipping point yeah yeah um, so I don't know if any of you do feel that there's this t tipping point going on this. Um, it, it's almost like it feels like just before you light a firework and that you get that fuse and then just before it goes off, you get that kind of stasis point. That's how it feels. And we're, uh, within the next two months, it's all just going to explode. But it needs to. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's bringing in community. Um, Katie and I run groups together. Um, quite deep stuff, but we're we're trying to bring together a community that will find magic, find liberation, and find would you say hope? Yeah, and exiting from the matrix and the the narrative that keeps getting pushed onto us, yeah. isn't it? It's all about that. 
yeah. finding our own way of living. Yeah, yeah. living this really, um, well, it's, it's quite a kind of chaotic time at the moment. So um, a lot of the feelings of what's going on at the moment is some people are feeling despair. I've heard that quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, people feeling, I suppose, low le level depression, would you yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. And people just, because we've been bombarded well, for years and years and years, but I use the last three years just because it's become so evident. Um, it's just a fear-based agenda, and that's all we're hearing. I'm not just talking about COVID or vaccine. I'm talking about all of it. This complete fear that is being perpetuated over and over again, and it's become like its own self-fulfilling mantra, hasn't it? So it's we're just trying to exist in this illusionary world. Yes. Because down here's the illusion, and I believe that to be reality. Um, holographic universe, all of that. I bang on about Michael Tolbert, but if you've never read it, read the holographic universe. It explains it quite well. Hmm. So I'm going to talk about a few things. On, I've got a little PowerPoint, which I haven't had for a while. Um, and Samantha Monroe saying she's had a tricky week. And also we're building up to the full moon, aren't we? That, yeah. That's coming on Sunday. So things are coming real, really coming up to the surface for lots of people. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Focus on love is the strongest. That's from um, Martine. Sam Munro, I agree. Tricky week. Oh. Um, Dor Dorothy Cassidy, good evening, everybody. Sarah King, grateful. Um, so, I think as we, like, they use the word Rubicon a lot, don't they? Yes. I don't think we quite know what that means. No, I think we can look up the literal word of Rubicon, but I think it means something a bit deeper. I don't think we can go back now I think we've gone past our event horizon so an event horizon in physics is you get past a certain point in a black hole say if you're going towards it there's a certain point that's the point of no return and that's where I think we're at but I think it's not a bad thing I think it's going to be a really really conscious thing I think there's going to be communities I mean we've got Shirley Luther's College Kate Winter and Shirley, um, myself as well, trying to create the People's Health Alliance for the Surrey. Um, and that's just about getting people together, offering skills, like a barter system. And we've yeah. always said that, haven't we? Yeah. Um, for when everything collapses, especially yeah. in the health world, I don't know. I know we've got to speak a little bit on code, haven't we? Yeah. We're allowed yeah. to say... <laughs> Um, yeah, because I got pulled. Um, yes, oh, I thank mean. you for those that join my YouTube. So I put up my down the ra rabbit hole revisited from my Facebook Live. Probably, I think it was twenty twenty, um, and this was all before the passports and all of that. Um, and it was really interesting because so much of what was said has happened, and that it just was good to go back. But then YouTube um, sent me a nice little email and said that I'd gone against the. World Economic Forum and the WHO guidelines. Oh, wow. So, and they said, if you do it again, we're going to ban you for life. Goodness me. <laughs> Lots of people from the group are tuning in. The girls down from New Forest. Oh, hello, everybody. Joe, Sarah. So getting ready for our reunion. Yeah, hello from the sisters. <laughs> Susan, very difficult week health-wise. Mm. Um, hi, Teresa. Hi, Catherine. Um, yes, so... Health-wise, there's been a lot of what we would understand to be karmic clearing. So I don't know if you can read on here. Vibration. The essence of our soul is pure vibration. So at the moment, they say that the soul's... Let me try and explain. So our soul essence, who we are. I'm not Kathy sitting here. I don't exist. Much to these delights, I'm sure. <laughs> but, um, but our souls are the one that um, vibrate a certain frequency. Um, they think that most souls, you, you can have as low as 16 hertz for a vibrating new soul, all the way up to 999 hertz and beyond. I think most of us in the, I hate to say awakened state, but that's probably right, would be vibrating at a high level. Does that make sense? And then you've got people that maybe aren't so aware 
but the soul's vibration is a bit lower. And I don't mean low or bad in a good way. I just mean it's just some people are coming in, they haven't had lifetimes. A lot of us have. Does that make sense? Or they've chosen. Or they've chosen. To stay in stasis. Yeah. And we, we want to go from stasis to, to homeostasis. I keep going green on the screen. It's really interesting. So I just want a little background just about where I'm doing Facebook Live. We're in a 18th century... Yeah. Coach stable. house. Coach house. It was the coach house, yeah. So, um, and we're on the ley line as well. And we're on the ley line. So there's a lot going on. So if you see a lot of pixelated energy, just... I think it's partly where we're doing it from. Okay. It? Anyway, so sound. The soul and cells react to the frequency. So you've got to think, um, I would say about frequency and the soul, when we were doing um, one of the marches many, many, back in the summer, what, a year and a half ago? Yep. Um, there was this whole, people were gathered at Traf Trafalgar Square, there was this whole unity feeling. Um, and then the the energy changed like that. Um, and there were some police vans with, like, antenna on them. They're saying, they, people are saying we've frozen, Cathy. Sorry. We, Sarah said we frozen, we've frozen and Julie. I can still hear you. And Julie. And you Tracy frozen. now saying you've frozen, but they can hear us. Okay. Frozen. Oh. But they can still hear. Okay. Um, tell me when we're back. You're back, Sarah King. We're back. Okay, isn't that funny? The minute we start talking about things we're not meant to speak about, we get pulled. This happened the last time. Alex okay. says hers is fine. Yeah, frequency she weapon. That's interesting, yeah. So, yeah, so um, all of these police fans, and you could feel the change of frequency. I think I was with Sarah King. Um and our group, and I just said I'm out because you could feel that. And you know, people they use weaponry, sound weaponry, they've used yeah. it in China for years. So, yeah. you know, we are at liberty to all sorts of technology that uses frequency. Yes, but when we're talking about um, that sort of frequency, you can always counteract it sound bowls, hertz frequencies, um. And the light, the light from the universe that we absorb into our cellular being. Um, I want to talk a little bit about dark and light because it's coming up a lot. And there's, um, there is a bit of a disparity, I think, in the spiritual community. I've said this for years and years and years, where you've got those that deny the existence of dark. So it's all about the light. But you cannot have light without dark, because um, you can't have the sun without a shadow. Doesn't make sense. And it all inter interconnected. So, um, and because we use a lot of channeling with John D, so Dr. John D, a lot of um, has been written about him that it, he was a sorcerer. He was um, the trapper of souls. He was doing all of this black magic, which. I personally, in what I channel of him, I think he was a visionary, he was misunderstood. We have to remember that this was the time of the great crusading, the, you know, the Christianity and the puritanical view. So everything he did had to be coded. So imagine him on Facebook Live and saying all of that and getting pulled. Exactly the same thing. So, you know, he died a pauper. And one of probably the greatest astrological figures of our time. So I just, I want people to be a bit mindful of people going, oh, they're dark, and does that make sense? And I think, especially with John Dee, the information that's coming through from him is, well, it's out there, isn't it, Katie? It's so, um, I, I can't go a lot into it because there's stuff that we don't understand with it, but I just want you to just be conscious that things that are said about people like him, they said the same Tesla died poor, um, yeah. No money. Um, a, l a lot of these visionaries were so misunderstood because they're ahead of their time. Does that make sense? And this dark and light thing, so love and light, that doesn't allow the nuance of dark. It, it, you have to have duality because that's what the universe is. Anything to add, Katie, before I Yeah, no, Stephanie on? said, definitely a visionary and a way shower. Enochian magic is so powerful as his legacy to humanity. Lovely. Stephanie, hello. Yeah. 
Um, I've known Stephanie a long time, lovely. Um, absolutely, Stephanie, it, the Enopia magic with which what we talk about, um, it will really ultimately, humanity, I think, will learn to use its God-given natural resources and powers. Yes. We've had that taken from us. And I think John Dee is just about giving that back. Yeah. And also, you channeled, didn't you, this week, that a lot of our words that we use in English now ha have stemmed from Enochian yes. word, wording, yeah. Yeah. with the three syllables, yeah. a lot of our words now. Yeah, so, um, yeah, a lot of the etymology root of language is him as well. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, it makes sense. Believe that we're in the void from the beginning. Absolutely. So... Um, when we channel, everything's always a paradox, isn't it? They say, um, we can't have light without dark, you can't be within without, all of this sort of thing. So it almost makes it impossible for the mind to be able to work within this kind of band of light. And that's what we're going to have to start realising, that we live in a duality. Okay. So this is the nine, can you see that? Yeah. 999 hertz, the astral projection frequency. Um, I don't know if any of you have done astral projection. You can try the Moody, so Robert Moody, he's got a technique. Um, but I'm sure most of us astrally project. I do it when I'm driving. And Dee goes, can you stop astrally projecting? Oh, sorry, sorry. It's a joke, I didn't actually. But when we tune out, when, you know, have you ever driven anywhere where you've signed out and you've managed to get there right? You know, I kind of think something is looking out for us, bit the subconscious, bit higher level. But we project or astrally project. I think astral projection is also remote viewing. So when I would want to go, um, so if I'm given a co co coordinate from the UK government to go and spy on Russia, they'll give me a coordinate, I look at it, I transport myself there. And we did a little bit of that, didn't we, in the lens this week of yep. by location. So being one place at the same time as being somewhere else. Okay? Yep. Um, Teresa's saying there's a frozen or blank screen, so I hope other people, it's not the same for everybody. No, okay. We're getting lots of hearts and stuff going up. Okay. Um, again, is, am I frozen? I can see it's pixelating on the screen. Oh, okay. No, it's not. Through here, it's absolutely okay. fine. So Katie's saying through the... I've been doing this work for the past four years now, and we are getting into co-creating. Yes, yes, that's Pauline Walsh. Um, yeah. Yeah, co-creation, um, cosmic alignment, and um, group work, I think, is really important going forward. Okay, I just uh, want to talk a little bit. Go on, Katie. No, it's all fine. Is it all People good? are saying it is. It's so... People, okay, lots some of people, people saying yes. Some aren't. Okay. Yeah. Right, so spiritual, this is what I think we're doing. We're all alchemists. And alchemy just means taking one frequency and bring it into a higher frequency. That's all it means. And you've got your, your chemistry alchemy, you've got your spiritual alchemy, soul alchemy. Um, so spiritual alchemy called the great work or opus magus. We talk about this in the lens as well. It is defined by the conscious effort to achieve the highest state of vibration by mastery over the inner work and the outer work. So inner work is everything within, and so microcosm, macrocosm. Outer work and inner work are essentially the same thing, but we have to bring that duality together. And when we do, it's to release the essence of our self-identity and merge with union for consciousness. Basically, Letting go of the ego, letting go of the three-dimensional matrix understanding of who we think we are. Um, and with the lens, it often asks us, Katie, doesn't it? Um, who are you? Mm. What are you? Um, what do you want? Yeah. So. And why are you here? Why are you here? And that's a huge question. All of them are, aren't they? Yeah. And obviously, um, ways to align and help the frequency is... Sound hole healing, gong, um, Tibetan bowls, all sorts, hertz frequency, all sorts. Okay. It keeps going green for us, but we can still hear it. We like it. It's witchy. 
It's you shape shifting okay. into an alien. Backpack, Mark. <laughs> okay. And really, the reason for light is that we can absorb it into the soul. See, I can see okay on the screen, so um, just you'll have to bear with us tonight. We are in a very old coach house full of beautiful ley line ghosty people. <laughs> so, what we want to do is bring this light. This is a phoenix, so you get the phoenix rising. But what also I think starts to become interesting is in the duality, you get the phoenix rising, but we're getting the phoenix descending. So there's this kind of, again, this polarity between the essence of in and the essence of out. So within, without. Make sense? Any yep. questions, Katie? No. Okay. Right. They're so evolved, all the people that follow you now, Kathy. Yeah. They understand it all first time. I don't need to be here, do I? <laughs> <laughs> because they've been following you for so long. <laughs> It's all amazing. Okay, so very basic aura colours now. Um, we've got this seven chakra points colours. So obviously red, root, all the way up. But ultimately, we've been told that the seven chakra points now are one. So that might be a bit controversial for some. But it would make sense if we're moving into unity from separation. Um, we won't be separated by seven, but then seven number is very important at the moment. We will be going into unity of one, and that's even with ourself. And are you seeing um, people's chakras differently now, Kathy, when you tune into people? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so um, what I'm noticing yeah. client wise, and I don't know if it's the same for you in, what, in your practice, mm. is that the root chakra is really becoming blocked. Okay, I have actually frozen. <laughs> so no, I'm now frozen. Okay. That's okay. This is not. You're going. Okay, so I keep going. Um, okay. Yeah, so the, the root chakra is quite blocked. Yeah. Um, but we're moving and evolving into the higher chakra points. It's almost like we don't perhaps need the lower chakra points for where we're going. Because the, the root chakra is our connection to the earth and we all need to be grounded into 3D, I understand that. Yeah. But I do feel that the higher chakra points are opening more. Does that make sense? Mm. Okay, I'm back. Samantha Monroe says about, yeah, interesting on one chakra. It does make sense though, doesn't it? Absolutely. Because we're evolving yeah. um, as humanity and interesting about the sevens. Now... Seven keeps coming in a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. And I know Faye's the, on numerology queen, and it's, you know, it's God's number, isn't it? It's yeah. the sign of spirituality, but we've had it a lot in your channelings, haven't we? Yeah, so the channelings have talked about seven, and also the seven seals. Um, so, yeah, yeah, constantly. So anyone that's um, watching, it's Faye, Faye, you need to talk to. <laughs> Sorry, Faye, Faye, Faye. Faye, yeah, yeah. She will do your numerology um, report. <laughs> So this is ultimately what we want. We want this kind of, can you see that eye? So we're creating union yeah. with divine. But by divine, I think that moves beyond, well, definitely moves beyond the religious gods because they are very, um, well, they're created, aren't they? Man created. Yeah. Um, although I'm not saying, I actually do believe in God, but I believe in God as a universal omnipresent being, universe. Um, so this is kind of, I love this imagery because it actually points out pretty much how, if I move my great big cranium, how we really are going to start to evolve and bring up the, um, Earth's chakra alignment as well. Make sense? Yes. Thelma, I've been in agony root chakra suddenly cleared two days ago. Fab fabulous. I find it helps if you think of the chakras as special Russian dolls. Yes, so dolls with dolls. Yes, dolls. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the best way to clear root chakra is, you know, going outside, isn't it? Barefoot, connecting with nature. Yeah. You know, go and do your gardening, clear your garden up, ready for the winter. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so this is um, the Taurus field. So when our body, when we're working through 
we'll say the seven chakras because we don't want to upset <laughs> certain spiritual laws. And there's seven spiritual laws as well, interestingly. So when we're working, just say the heart, we'll just say the heart. Um, when you're pushing energy out, so when I do my meditations, I always get people to vortex the energy forward. But ultimately we're creating this, it's called a torus knot or a tordial field. Mm -hmm. And it's how, this is how actually energy moves. It co-creates with itself, um, like a whale when it spurts out from its whale hole. <laughs> <laughs> Blower. Um, <laughs> it goes up. Keep it real. Collapses down and goes, and that's where we are. We would be in the centre now. On the physics, um, this, so imagine this, this is a black hole. In the middle of a black hole, you've got something called the Einstein Rosen Bridge. It's sad that I know this. Geeky, doesn't matter. And in that Einstein Rosen Bridge, they believe that um, energy collapses into this. To just imagine energy going in there and it gets crushed, crushed, crushed to the point where no light can exist. When it goes past the Einstein Rosen Bridge, it comes out the bottom half mm -hmm. and you can go back in time but also light starts to come out as well. So what I'm trying to say is we've always got light, even in the darkest collapsing star and black hole, light still exists, we just can't see it as light. Does it make sense? Hmm. And that's kind of how our energy moves. Hmm. I won't go off too much off track. You've got Raimi in the golf track. And that's just a pretty little picture. <laughs> but I love. Um, it's like those spirographs, yes, isn't it? Yes, beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. if you think of the Earth, um, just say that's the centre of the Earth, that's pretty much how the energy line's moving. Now, Katie is on, I can't remember the name of this new ley line. Doesn't matter. Katie's house sits directly on a ley line. Well, we've got St Michael's Church there and St Mary's Church, so, but they said the Leaf Hill ley line, they've changed the name, haven't that's they? That's right. So... Is it not um, the dragon ley line? I think it is the dragon. So we've got the dragon yeah. ley lines. Um, yes. We put the dragon out because we're going to talk about this. Um, so, yeah, so do, I'll use your house example. Um, mm. Casey's in between St. Michael and St. Mary. So both ley lines in their own right. Yeah. And Leaf Hill is also the counterpart um, twin flame to Glastonbury. Glastonbury Tor, is Glastonbury it? Tor. Yeah. So um, you're on the direct dragon line. Now, a lot of Information has been coming in about Ophicus, who is a serpent bearer, and he is definitely linking into these ley lines that they are now calling the dragon lines. Mm. Okay? Mm. Bellinus, Fay Fay, Bellinus line, yeah. So because the they're in the Bellinus goes, line, yeah. aren't they, down in New Forest? Yeah, New Forest starts in the Isle of Wight, right, that's all it. the way down through. Yes. The Bellinus is called the Spine of Albion. So it goes all the way up the country. It goes through Royston Caves. Um, yes. goes all the way up to Roslyn Chapel and Orkneys, um, Callanash, all the way through. Yes. Whale hole made me giggle. And actually, I will hold on to that in a visual way. <laughs> yes, sorry, I couldn't think of the word for a blow hole. Um, Bellinus, Gary Bitcliffe on Lays, Casey. Okay. Um, because we keep getting told to go to do some work at Leaf Hill, don't we? So it's a really good pe point, isn't it? People go up to Leaf Hill where the big castle is. Yeah. If you're feeling, you know, ungrounded, just go there. It's a huge energy yeah. point yeah. locally in Surrey, isn't it? Yeah. So for you, Surrey, for the ground, I you know, if you're feeling a bit off, yeah. what people are saying for grounding, etc. Yeah. And um, Katie, we um, channeled that there were. Six points. Is it seven? Oh. Yeah, at Leaf Hill. At Leaf Hill. So Leaf Hill, when you go to see that the tower, saying. you've got the little um, food place, worst flapjack ever. <laughs> um, you've got the six points all yes. around. Yes. Um, and that's where the dragon line will go up and then down. That's right. So yeah, you're right. If you um, Leaf Hill, I think we need to do work there. And it's yeah. about liberating yeah. this ley line. Um, there has been talk that um, in the 1500s, certain people trapped souls in the ley line, um, in, in the ley lines. I can't go with that myself, but, you know, everyone's entitled to their view, whatever. Um, 
But for me, I think when we went to Devil's Den, um, there are people that get trapped by the place rather than the ley line. Does that make sense? So um, when you've got ghosts in the house, they're more sort of attached to the place, the house rather than the ley line. Mm. So it's just my view on it. Yeah. And there's one thing that um, you changed my whole view on ley lines, which is brilliant to tell everyone, is that we think of ley lines as slim, don't we? Yeah. But you said they can be 25 miles oh, long, yeah. which is incredible. Um, and also Tanya, sorry, quickly, uh, saying Edward Courtney said some years ago that Leith Hill was the violet flame chakra of the yes. earth. Yeah. Because you knew about that, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, hi Tan, hope the boys are alright. Um, yeah, so it is the violet flame. I, I got a um, slide that we did to put the violet flame through, and it is the dragon line as well. Um, Roman roads follow ley lines. Yes, Catherine, they do. So yeah. you've got the Ridgeway in Wiltshire, which is one of the oldest roads, Roman roads. They follow ley lines, but ley lines are about 25 miles across, and they breathe. So they go, they contract, expand, like a lung, contract, expand. So um, in some areas, that's where you kind of, you can feel you're on an energy centre sometimes, can't you? Yeah. And they used to build all the churches along Absolutely. the ley lines, didn't they? And all down in Wiltshire, all the yeah. main key points are all on ley lines, aren't they? And it's normally water nearby, isn't it? Yeah. Because that water kind of helps. That's yeah. it. So yeah. um, I talked about it quite a bit, but um, Wiltshire is, there's a lot of chalk and water. And when chalk and water meet the Earth's electromagnetic field, it um, it harnesses that electromagnetic field and um, expands it. There's a word that I can't find. I'm sorry, I've had, Bobby was up all night yowling, so... No, you're on track. And also Lee Hill, of course, is Lee chalk. Hill. Isn't chalk. it? Chalk yeah. and water. Yeah. Um, but it's good for everybody's health, isn't it? And well-being. If yes. you go and walk in these places and sit in churches and contemplate these sacred lines absolutely yeah um yeah so the word i was looking for that is magnifies magnifies the electromagnetic frequency i love that i could um i know i've done this before on facebook if you see this imagery here this is the most alchemical symbol you can have um the lines this is the outer world inner world um the great father you've got all of the um corpus so ground interior terra sun moon this um is probably one of the most expansive alchemical symbols you can have and it, you've got the squared circle you've also got the um triangle and the so this is outer inner world so does that make sense it's about bringing all of our divine created information back into us in a very very um that's a very very basic explanation i won't do too much more and just notice on the magnus opus which means the great work you've always got the snake you've always got the serpent and the serpent has been demonized does that make sense yes and then you've got the caduceus so remember that the um the medical symbol is the caduceus, which is the serpent. But, you know, people say serpent is bad, slaying of the dragon, all of that. Moving on. Don't need any of that. Okay. Um, I am just going to put a... Oh. Is it gone? Yes. Okay, let me put, okay. There we go. So I'll keep that on. So any questions for it? Is it any questions for anyone? Let me go. No. Okay. Okay. So if you're all ready, I think I've frozen, so I don't know if people are saying anything. Um, you've not frozen. Oh, I see. It... Okay. So um, can you all give me a little um? Heart, so I know everyone's here because I'm going to go into channel soon. I've got a little heart. Oh, that's fine. Oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah, they're all. Yeah, happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Right, okay. So, um, so what I would like, so when we go into channel, yeah. 
Mm. Um, if you all just sort of join me, it does help. The more collective energy that we can bring in. Um, it's okay, everyone's saying you're not frozen, it's right. all good. So, okay. so um, what I'm going to do is start to link in. So if you can all just close your eyes, if you can. And we're just going to all join heart energy together. And as you start to kind of just um, becoming aware of the heart and joining the group, we're going to open up to channeling. And I can't guarantee who comes in who doesn't. Okay, so as we start our channel, we have Dr. John D. What a surprise. So he's saying um, he welcomes the group again. He is um, completely enmeshed in the magic work of the outer world. And sometimes what he says makes no sense whatsoever until we have to look it up. And he's saying that our outer world and our inner world is now combining. So that feeling he's saying that we're feeling of being slightly discombobulated. He's saying the outer world and the inner world are starting to merge. I have also Metatron energy, so Archangel Metatron is coming in. He wants to send everyone here this incredibly strong frequency, and it's 888,000, so 888,000 hertz, so all of the eights, which is our unity symbol. And he wants us to feel this 888,000 hertz into the heart. And he's saying this will join all of the other chakra points into our oneness, into our unity with self and unity of divine spark. We've got loads of angels coming in. So this is going to be a channel that encapsulates more than one person. But they're saying we are all one. And I'm a true believer that when we channel... We're channel channeling from the divine information. We've got the 14 archangels coming forward. And they're saying it's about the fifth, the quintessence, the fifth element. So the 14, the four, the one, the five. They want to send us light, superluminal light. So superluminal is light that exists beyond the frequency of our knowing, of our seeing, of our hearing. It's an extrasensory light, and they want to bring it in now. They're saying it exists in the very cellular aspect of our being, in our soul shard, in our strands of divine understanding. And they're telling us that to forget who we are, to not place the onus of all of our intellect on our three-dimensional selves, but to open and expand, co-create this incredible divine connection, this telepathy, if you will, of conscious choice. Conscious choice, that's what they're saying. And though we're working with consciousness, we have a conscious choice to do so. Uh, we've got Coventina here. She is a um, ascended master, directly linked to the um, United Kingdom, the heart chakra of the world. She's bestowing bestowing blessings upon us. She's saying the heart chakra of the world is the very, very essence of where this journey will begin for humanity, for the world. And she's saying those that are walking and treading fearlessly. With this light are the torchbearers, the harbingers of great wealth of knowledge. It's an Atlantean frequency coming through, a light within a light within a light. So a triple light, a superluminal trinity of light. Okay, they're showing this huge sphere. And I can see our, our planet, our world. And then our world is just 
bathed in this huge sphere of light around the earth and the earth looks tiny within this sphere it's almost like a um yeah a grid a spherical grid of light it's super luminal in nature it has intelligence we are at the mercy of a three-dimensional matrix overload and what they're saying that means is the program that we have been so subservient to in the last maybe 400 years is starting to release us from it this is also a conscious choice they're saying you make a conscious choice to emancipate yourself from the tyranny you can also make a conscious choice not to and that's just the soul's progression and it's interesting because they're saying out of this perceived darkness and remember everything's illusionary will come the, the seed of this co-created light it's, it's just like a little tiny spark but it's boomed out it's almost like a kind of imploding star that's given its last dying light off this incredible expansion like um yeah an exploding star as a dying light but from that death comes rebirth you must die whilst you are living. Coventina is saying she's here to help the Avalonian spirit and spheres and the, the Albion. They're saying that the true tip of the Atlantean frequency sits within the UK, within 400 miles around the peripheral of the UK. The very tip of Atlantis is... Um, definitely in the Atlantic, but very, very top, high Brazil, all of that area. And they're saying all of the ley lines are awakening because we are becoming awakened. And our true consciousness sits within the consciousness of our tribe, of our family, of our soul family. This singular path no longer exi exists. There's only a unity path. And I can see everyone walking like at the same pace. And they're saying what happens is when you start to immerse yourself within the tribal consciousness, there's this kind of reaction that garners a kind of understanding of how someone else thinks, breathes. And it's all to do with the divine love of compassion, deep compassion. They're saying you cannot have love without truth and truth without love. But all of love and truth is underpinned by compassion. They're saying because compassion is devoid of any sense of ego or attachment to that emotion. John D is saying um, there's a new remedy. Sorry, Katie. This is for um, the second half. And it is the superluminal light. And he'll download it as a frequency for everyone on Facebook here. But we will take it as a remedy. And it's this hyper superluminal consciousness. It's beautiful. It sits beyond the frequency of our understanding at the moment. Because he's saying within the next eight to ten months... This superluminal hyperconsciousness will become embedded and understood. And it's vibrational binary. Okay. Um, it's 187-2240. He's saying that is the vibrational signature of this superluminal light. And he's sending that frequency through the airways, if you like. And he's saying just to hear it is to experience. He's saying all of his work was only ever done through this huge expansion of love and knowledge and wisdom, alchemy. We've lost our magic, he's saying. We've lost our wonder at our natural world, our vibrationally quantum world. And he wants us to bring that God particle energy right into the heart. We've lost the spark. 
and he's telling us to not worry. And though the next two months are going to be illusionarily quite difficult, understand that you can't have progress without regress. He's going to um, tell us about this great intercession, a galactic intercession. Everything he's saying we're going to hear going forward in the next few months, we must take it without any ounce of fear and understand that we are protected. This has been known for a long time and it really is based on illusion and the less fear we have attached to it the, the more expanded we become he's saying fear is the great constrictor john d saying in his time um, many many lives were lost through the constriction of fear and the only antithesis of fear is rebellion he was a rebel, a maverick. And he's saying everyone here listening is a rebel and a maverick. But they are now seen as bad words, as people that have no conscience, people that are rebel rousers. But he's saying the planet has only ever really expanded through rebellious acts. But he's saying let's understand the word rebellious is working for the light. Because you can have rebellion that is also steeped in dark, which is then just anarchaic and destroying. Any rebellion that does not destroy the aspect of someone else is true maverick rebellion light. This light is the superluminal frequency is going to go straight into the heart. He's saying ultimately there'll be one chakra point that radiates beyond anything else, and that will be the heart chakra and the seal and the upper seal. There's a new vibrational healing system coming into force that will counterbalance the divine masculine and the divine feminine. They will intertwine. He's saying it's an osmosis of divinity, spirituality, and he's saying quantum science, but true quantum science. Now he's saying for the homeopaths, and he said this before, the essence of phosphorus is going to be very important going forward. And he's also making sure that we all really do um, use root of ginger. And he's kind of making some sort of I suppose it's a tea, but it feels like it's a bit more um, potent than that. He's saying, when you live in an astringent world, you counterbalance that with an astringency. Wow, okay. So we've got the love is coming in. He wants to underpin this compassion that we must have for all things. It's the only way that um, true ascension can occur is when we take our feelings and our ego out of the way and step truly into the light of another. They hold us dear, they send us love, they honour what we do, they understand it is very hard right now, but through that struggle will come the greatest light of all, and that is our freedom. Our freedom of restraint, where all things can coexist in this world. Animals can live happily alongside man. Man can live happy alongside nature. But they are saying that the created system, the illusionary system, has become so indebted that its release will be shocking for some, but liberating for most. And Coventina just wants to send her love as well. And she's saying we must all work as one. 
and help each other through these coming months with February being a real sign of expansion of light. And with that, they step back. Okay, so I don't know if everyone's back. That was amazing, thank you, Kathy. Oh, you're welcome. It was incredible, incredible information. Yeah, really. Um, some of it doesn't. Is everyone back? Give me a little yeah, toot yeah. if you're back. Yeah. And sometimes it's good to re-listen to these um, channelings, isn't it? Because every time you listen, you hear new information. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, um, yeah. And if you don't want to listen to the first lot, you can just <laughs> drag it yeah, along yeah, to yeah. the time that you don't want to hear. Has yeah. anyone got any? Um, any response or questions about the channel? Um, one lady, I think it was Sam, said, "What's? can you show the dragon on the screen? It's a, was it a fox or a dragon? You know, this, the, the, on, the, um, on the table, Cathy, the actual this statue, one? yes. Can she you became see it? Fast, yes. And it's he's a, got a dragon's, what's this? Well, it's... Um, it's a dragon. It's actually Jade, the dragon. Jade. And Alex gifted me the crystal, Alex Davis. Um, I can't think of it. It works with the dragon energy okay. lines. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's um, really I think cool. Pauline yeah. Walsh said she was a bit confused about the dragon energy. Yeah. So yes. um, I haven't got dragon a lines. Here, but there, there's two major lines that go through the world. So you've got the world as a flat map. You've got the female line that goes all the way through the UK, and then you've got the male one that goes like that. So the female dragon goes across the world like that, and the male dragon like that, and it intersects at two points. Those um, sections, those points, are now becoming one. So unity is happening across the board. Okay, the screen went crazy during the channel. I've never seen anything like it on Facebook before. Oh, wow. While you were talking about light coming, I had an amazing screen of colour, rainbow light coming from the screen. Took a photo of it. Oh, fabulous, Julie. Julie, if you could put that photograph on oh, the wow. comment, that would be really good to see. Because there's a lot of energy going on in here, isn't there? Yeah, huge. Huge amounts. Yeah. And um, I'm listening, but, but became distracted by the animal... Oh, that was the dragon that you okay. showed. And Alex has just said it's one of those Andara crystals, you know, the red crystal on top of the dragon's head. Sarah King saying they were all... Please share the picture because I saw it too. So people saw something when we brought the light in, which would be really, Incredible. really... I've gone green again. Really, really interesting if... Whilst Kathy Mingo was channeling, the light that took over the screen, the screen was wow, like a rainbow waterfall. Unreal. You oh, must check it out. That's incredible. Wow. So, um, well, that just proves that light is coming in, it's vibration, it's going through. It doesn't matter that I'm talking to you for a screen. I do prefer face-to-face. -face. Yes. That's just the way I am. Yes, yes. But yeah. obviously, it's not really making a difference, is it? Because it's coming through here. Yeah, one lady saying that she's seen green and other people are reporting rainbows. Wow. So rainbows and green, wow. The screen lights were incredible, just like a rainbow. So, and remember, we're all, everyone's talking about the new rainbow light that's coming in. And when the queen died, do you remember, even the mainstream media, oh, double rainbow. So um, I also want you to listen out in the media for words like lens, optic, um transference, all those sort of things, because these words are going to start to come in. Does that make sense? Mm. And if anyone's got pictures of those rainbow screen, I would be really interested to see it so that we can um, show it together. Yes, I did see the rainbow on the screen when it came. There was a light orb over you by the screen. How interesting. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, because just to help everybody, they in the channel they talked about galactic intercession. What do you think that meant? Um, and it said we are protected and not to fear it. It's all based on illusion. Okay. Katie writes everything down, by the way. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Galactic Intercession. Yeah, oh, no, oh, oh you've forgotten. Okay, I just wondered if you saw anything, Kathy. I wonder, you know, because there's um, there's some people saying we're gonna they're gonna do holographic galactics. Right. Or I just wondered whether you felt anything okay. differently. Did, well, intercession means someone that inter intercedes on someone else's behalf. Yeah, like intervention. Yes. Um, they were the words you channeled. Yeah, well, I would think that. I do believe that there will be a show of galactic light. Do I believe it to be holographic? Don't know. I think it would be real. Yeah. So do you think we should all be looking up a little bit yeah. more now? Definitely. And look for your light. Look for your light. Um, yeah. And any movement in the stars. And, yeah. Yeah. And planetary movement, of course, as well. Yes. But yeah, I, yeah. I'm really happy that actually people got to see the light on on this medium of Facebook, the biggest, yeah. um, yeah, darkness Brilliant. in the world. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous. Okay, so... Um, and I just was going to say as well, which I thought was brilliant for everybody, you channeled, it said that, that fear is the greatest constrictor. Yes, so please don't fear what's coming. We're going to hear a lot in the next couple of months. Um, they're already talking about electricity blackouts so you know don't fear any of this because that's what they want and remember that we've had this kind of slow grading of fear dripped in drip 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 um i, I kind of feel like the fear we like you know ducks being fed like far by ducks just having it completely poured into our gullet and it's really um it's becoming part of our creation part of our nuance and remember none of this is real i mean obviously when we're plunged into darkness it will be our 3d reality but don't fear it okay because that's what they're saying don't fear this this is just we're just slipping into a new modality of life that's all it is okay yeah, excellent that's really helpful Quantum mechanics were mentioned too. That is very interesting recently with the black hole pictures shown by JST. And you could see the changes in light. I don't know what JST is. I, Sam, I think it would be real too. And I think that I'll see it more just generally. How can we contact them to find our way, the galactic? Um, Joanne, Joanne Langley, there are things called C5 pro protocol, which is Stephen Greer. Um, so he, he's about bringing in the galactic. I don't like the word alien anymore because that's just Hollywood, isn't it? So gal and galactic, galactics don't like the word galactic anymore. They like celestial. So um, anyway, so that's how you can do it. Um, C5. And there's lots of Stephen Greer's work, yeah. isn't there, on yeah. Gaia TV, things like that, isn't yeah. there? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And also the girls, Fei Fei, has got um, the guy they're working with the, uh, with the Galactics, aren't they? The Superluminals. Okay. So, um, James Webb, Space Telescope. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, yes. Yeah. So um, we listen to the channel because sometimes there's um, layers of it and you hear it the second time, there's something yes. else that comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just a sort of uh, everyday tip as well, just to remind everyone, they said root of ginger. Root of ginger? Yeah, it's very warming okay. for the winter coming up as well and it's very grounding. Okay, so get your ginger in. Would you steep it in just hot water or...? Yes, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. And in using it in all your cooking. Because generally when you get messages like that, it's very helpful, isn't it? And we yeah. always kind of adhere to them, don't we? And they said for the homeopath phosphorus. Yes. I've said this before. What would that be? Um, How would you use it? Um, phosphorus is um, a great remedy for, well, it's for the, let's say, the awakened people, the, the, the psychic. So it right. kind of helps psychic ability, but oh, really okay. does help you to ground um, and gives you great boundaries as well from the, say, like the non, we could use it as from the nonsense of the 3D, what's going, coming in through us, at us through the media, right. um, phosphorus would kind of bubble us a little bit from, to give us discernment. Okay. Yeah, okay. to kind of help us to sort of be in ourselves, yeah. in, in our bodies. Yeah. 
because we need we need all the help we can get and you talked as well about unity in the um it was coventina said kind of we've got to all join together and help each other out yeah i think that's the most important thing now isn't it yeah i have tried yes Um, and people have been it's interesting during the um lockdown and things people are isolated and that's really the ramifications yeah, of that isolation yeah. is now becoming clear. Yeah. And people, you know, some people are afraid to go out. Yeah. Um, depression. Depression. Yeah. So just know that um, you've always got a place to land here as well. This is why I'm doing this. It's, you know, Katie and I, well, Katie, you ran a group through lockdown for ages, didn't you? Yeah, and the whole I time, kind of, the whole year. I came in and I've been Two doing years. this. Yeah. You've been doing that. Um, and we do it because... Partly, it brings people together because some people don't have a voice. Mm-hmm. And when you can hear other people talking, it, it does help, doesn't it, to know that you're not alone and that there are there's people out there just like you. There's not that many of us, but we're growing and growing and growing. Yeah, and what we focus on, and if yeah. we put our energy out there for community and unity, it generally comes back to us, doesn't it? That's right, we yeah. get what we focus on and what our dreams and prayers are, so Absolutely. it's all about all of us joining now, isn't it, together? Yeah. Lots of people putting um, ginger essential oil, by the way, and some oh, great okay. advice, yeah. Oh, I've gone green. There we go. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to leave it. They're saying what potency for phosphorus. <laughs> oh, let's, should we do? Let's just say a uh, 200 because that's quite 200, a 200. Pun- yeah, 200. Uh, 200 C. If 200 you order C. from Helios, I would say once a day. It's a fabulous okay. remedy. Yeah. So, I hope everyone heard that. Katie said Helios yeah. Pharmacy 200 C yes. phosphorus once a day. Yeah, and it's great for your lungs. Um, it's it will help you stop getting colds this winter. Yeah. You know, it's a real good that and the ginger would really help. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to leave there. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for Katie for um, her, all of her input as well, which is fabulous. And I just want to say, if you um, if you want to sort of get involved, PHA, go through Lucy's College. Big heads up to everyone that's working here. You know, you're all healers on here. We've got Alex and Tracy Stannard, um, Sam Munro, amazing with her Reiki for animals and her animal communication. Sarah King, who does so much in the community. There's so many people, um, and I'm here as a spokesperson. That's my job. But we've all just got to stick together at this time. We're all going to be okay. Oh, Sarah Richards and Juju Love. Oh, they're here. They've been very quiet. Catherine Hodgson, th- look, thank you everybody. Um, thank you, Kat. You mentioned Zoom workshops and meditations. Can you talk about that? Yes. Okay, so very quickly. Hey, Ross, sorry. I'm going to be doing um, Zoom meditations. So I'll do it kind of like this Facebook Live, but I'll do it all on Zoom. Um, I just got to get everything sorted with that, and it will be um, probably an hour, hour 15 meditation. We go quite deep. And I'm also going to do um, kind of like I do on Facebook Live, but where we've got a bit more information on workshops, everything to do with light, quantum physics, quantum mechanics, mediumship, all of it. Um, And yeah, but that will be a paid thing so I can send people links. Yeah, a donation. So I will will leave, um, the minute I get that up and running, I'll put it on my page. Look, thanks everybody. Um, lovely to see you all. Thanks again for always joining. Um, and have a really good couple of weeks. It was amazing tonight, Cathy. Okay. Thank and you thank so you, Katie, much. And thank you all of you. Yeah, it's been great. Thank okay. you. Bye.